since we do have a tuning solution for this car, it was time to really see what this Gen 2 stock header can do. So here it is. This is a Gen 2 2.4 liter stock header bolted on to our Gen 1 2015 FRS. And after we we tune and dial this in and see what, what it's really capable of, we still have our stock header. This is a Gen 1 stock header with the slightly smaller runners, the secondary runners, and we're gonna see how much of a difference that is on the header alone. And that will give us a really good idea of what can be done with the header and how much of the power uh, difference that, that the 2.4 has it comes from the redesigned newer header. So welcome back to the Stratified Dyno. What we have here is the 2015 FRS, and that's because it has the 2022 BRZ header installed. So now with this header and our ability to tune the car, we're really going to be able to tell uh, how well it performs compared to the Borla and get some insight on the actual performance of the 2022 header. So first, we're going to baseline the car with no tuning changes, and then we're gonna use AccuTech to dial in the tune for this 2022 header, and we're gonna see if we can have our cake and eat it too. In other words, can we have, uh, can we get rid of the torque dip that's common to this car, and can we get some more top end? So without further ado, let's get started. So now that we've got the results uh, for the 2.4 header, it's time to pull it out of the car so we can drop the 2.0 header back in the car. And while I'm under here, just a quick overview of what it takes, especially to remove an OEM header because it's, it's gonna be the biggest header that, that you're gonna be putting in there. So uh, there are studs at this connection and uh, the when you go to aftermarket, they replace these with bolts. So it makes it much easier. And the reason for that is that once you drop the three uh, uh, nuts here. So there's three on this side and then there's three on this side, which are actually quite easy to get to unless there's there's a lot of corrosion. But once you, you do that, then you can't pull this assembly forward enough um, and and to, to basically loosen it from here. So what we have to do is that we actually have to uh, undo this mid pipe uh, and pull it out so, uh, so that you can have the clearance to remove this without these studs being in the way. And once you move to an aftermarket header, uh, you're not going to run into this problem because like I said, this is gonna be replaced with bolts. But just a little FYI, uh, if you're removing uh, stock headers or replacing stock headers in there, uh, that's the only hang up. Otherwise, these things will come out uh, really quickly. So now onto the swap and back to the dyno. Now onto the meat and potatoes of our findings. So this is this is the real fun stuff, and I'm trying to give you guys as much contrast as possible uh, on this monitor. So what do we find? Well, let's first start with the power curve generated with the 2.4 header on the 2.0 car on pump gas, and this is on our Mustang dyno, and it's all in SAE corrected horsepower and torque. So the peak the peak uh, horsepower here with the 2.4 header was 177 uh, on this uh, on this Mustang dyno and then peak torque was just about 144. So keep in mind this is a two liter car and uh, this is the 2.4 uh, liter header put on the car with a drop-in filter and a pair and cat back as the other mods. This however doesn't tell you much um, other than than just what a you know power curve looks like, but what you want to do is some get some context. So let's compare how this looks like compared to a tuned pole with the 2.0 headers. So here is where things get really interesting. First of all, in this lower region here, so in this lower region here, the faint lines are the 2.0 header tuned on the 2.0 car. And up until, you know, just below 3000 RPM, the 2.0 header does have an advantage. However, however, 
and this torque dip here where you really feel it with a 2.0 car the 2.4 header does so much better so all this area is filled in you do lose a little bit here so there's a crossover point and that crossover point happens right around 39 so almost 4000 rpm where the 2.0 header the faint line has an advantage over the 2.4 header however this area that you gain with the 2.0 header on the 2.0 header tune e is is smaller than the area that you gain here and if we continue if we continue towards red line you can see that right around here which is right around kind of the the peak horsepower, um, which is right about 6,500 RPM, uh, the 2.4 header again starts to have an advantage. By the end of the pull here, we're looking at about five horsepower. So this top end area, that is simply due to better flow. So the 2.4 header, uh, we've talked about in our other video about how it has larger runners and uh, and that that allows it to flow better. Now, why do you have this discrepancy in here? That is very interesting, and it has to do with with the resonances, the <clears throat> excuse me, the exhaust resonances that are happening uh, within the header, and and that's what's giving this this naturally aspirated engine its its dips and its troughs. And as you've seen in our in our dyno video with the two point four car, the two point four engine has a lot less of a torque dip compared to the 2.0. Well, guess what? A whole lot of that is attributed to this new header design that they have on the 2.4 car. And uh, another another terms of comparison is, let's see how it does in terms of time. So this is always interesting to see because you get to see which car finishes a fourth gear faster. And you can see that the um, 2.4 header car finishes it in about 19.897 seconds and then the 2.0 header car tuned finishes in about 19.882 uh, so we're talking about uh sorry that's probably incorrect here yeah, we're back back on the line 20.556 so we're talking about the you know three quarters of a second difference between the cars both optimized in terms of tuning now going back to tuning it's important to understand that to get these gains from the 2.4 header, you need to tune for it. How do I know this? Well, once we finished our 2.4 header tune, which is the same line. So you can see here that, that they, they, are, they are the same line if I put it back in terms of engine speed. So here's a 2.4 header tune, the dark line, and then a 2.4 header tune. Well, what we did is that we just slapped on that 2.0 header and left the 2.4 header tune intact. And look at the gap uh, here in terms of torque dip. So this tells you that the tune is just not optimized and you cannot take a tune that's designed for one particular header and expect it to perform optimally when you change the header since it seems to be one of the biggest differentiators in terms of performance uh, on, this, on this engine. So that's, uh, that, that highlights a few things. Well, first of all, it highlights that the 2.4 header is an upgrade when tuned for on the 2.0 engine. So it's, it's encouraging. It's good to see that the 2.4 car comes with, with a better flowing header from the factory. And it'll be interesting to see if people, uh, you know, once once they upgrade headers on their 2.4 cars, they're going to be making these available in the aftermarket um, to to uh, 2.0 guys uh, and gals who want to use the 2.4 OEM header as an upgrade on their car. And um, a final kind of a final show here is is just to indicate what a tune alone does on the 2.0. Uh, on the 2.0 car. So this is just the 2.0 car tuned in the dark line and it, this is untuned. So you can see that we gain a little bit of power here down low and then we gain power everywhere else throughout the, throughout the pull. So that's the difference. And if we put this in terms of time, you can see 
clearly that the tuned car on the 2.0 header makes more power and is faster to accelerate through a fourth gear pull than it is untuned. You already knew that. But again, just highlighting the importance of tuning and, and highlighting that uh, really the best the best setup if you were to take the, the OEM headers, just the OEM headers into consideration, is going to be a 2.4 header on the 2.0 car and tuned accordingly. We're super excited to have tuning available uh, hopefully soon for the 2.4 car and to explore what we can do on that with tuning and and of course uh, we're going to be exploring what other headers uh, do on on both the 2.0 and the 2.4 and uh, and extracting the most from their performance and and thus highlighting and, and extrapolating the header themselves in what they add to it uh, in terms of performance when when tuned for so subscribe stay tuned a lot of a lot more brz frs gre6 content coming up and uh, we'll see you guys next time